Intro. What's up, YouTube? We're getting ready to do a new Ligari stone kit on freshly built countertops. We're finishing up the weather stripping and check out these colors that are going down. You're gonna have to stay tuned till the end to see how this one turns out. All right, so we're ready to pour, guys. Everything's prepped, products mixed. Now, the biggest thing is make sure you're dumping this stuff out of the bucket. You're not wasting time messing around, letting that resin sit in the bucket. If I wanna add more color, I'll just have Kyle grab the spray paint uh, and spray it into a, one of those drinking cups and we'll add a little to the top. So I'm gonna do a little bit down here and I'm gonna jump to another counter. Now I got a lot of this container dumped here. I want to kind of get it on all the other counters as well. So we have the same colors throughout. Dude, look at that. Ridiculous. After pouring out a couple times out of that, now we're coming to more concentrated black. So I'll have Kyle just add a little bit more of that color because again, we want to get the same colors throughout the counter. And then we'll just let him drain out. Let's watch this. Yeah, it's freaking beautiful. What is it yeah, it's, that's, that's freaking beautiful, dude. It's like well, that, that was from it sitting in there. No, it's from it sitting on there for a minute, crusting over a little. When it's fresh, it does that. So this is gonna do a lot of that. Right off the bat. I like this better. You ready? No. Tell me when, dog. A little bit more, Kyle. Blue doozy, dog. So we're just adding, adding some of that spray paint. If we want to see more of that color, you can always add more. You can't take it away. I don't know if we're gonna wanna sp spray this with denatured, man. I don't think we want this to sell out. I don't. I rarely do. Uh, we'll do uh... Yo, on that 6.4 million, video, we, did we spray it? Probably. So the biggest thing when you guys are pouring out your containers is we wanna fill in bigger spots. I don't wanna pour a bead right next to another big bead. I wanna fill in the bigger areas. And then when we get down to like our last two buckets, I wanna start fine tuning my pores, smaller pores, trying to fill in the larger open areas. And again, this was this bead was probably that big when I poured it, there was just more here. So after a few minutes, it levels out. That's why we wanna pour, right? We don't wanna pour next to right next to beads. We wanna kinda of fill in spots, as you can see out here on the island, right? All my pores were out away from another bead but you can see how they're starting to touch in spots because it's leveling out. And that, that'll help you be able to get an a even amount of resin all throughout your tops. Perfect, perfect, it's freaking perfect. Just a scosh, just a scosh. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right, so we're down to our last two buckets. I'll save the black one that doesn't really have any color in it. We'll do that one last. So like I said before, now, now I'm starting to really dial in my pores, trying to fill in the most open spots. It's freaking wild, dude. All right, we definitely need some color throughout here. Damn, this color, this, that spray paint in black is just stupid, dude. <laughs> and we could literally just do a counter with those. Give me some more of that, dog. Oh, this is freaking nutty, bro. It reminds me of that brown one we did, but blues.
and we're going to run around with just solid black vein right through that. Here, coming over here, come or James. If you guys wanted more color, you could just simply add it to this black. We'll just dump it out. I think we got enough color on these counters. So we're just going to go black and just start making sure everything's filled in. What do you guys think? Did, should we add more color? Same. It was my favorite. I, I'm biased, so these are my favorite colors. You got me, dude. You got me. So any spots you don't like, you can mess with. Like I said, I poured that black bead through there. Then I'm going to blend this. I want to go with the vein, but I'm just going to run a paint stick. You can do your hand as well. You can really create some cool like fracture veins by manipulating that with a paint stick. And again, like I said, I'll just follow a pattern. I mean, some of these I could hit, but it, it's cool. We got a lot of random stuff going on out here. Just so it's not so concentrated color in that area. See, it gives it more of a natural vein look. Biggest thing is making sure you're checking your back edges if you're doing black with black primer. Like this is all mist right here, no resin. I'm gonna just add a little bit, get it on the wall so Kyle can clean that off for me. <laughs> if you do get it on the wall, denatured alcohol in a rag, clean it right off. Painted wall, tile, no matter what you got, it'll clean it right off. What do you guys think? We had color anywhere? Maybe right here? <laughs> Got him. All right, so this spot's bugging me. I'm gonna add a little color, dump it out in there. Too much black area. We're gonna go with whatever color we have the most ready. Give that a shake. We just need denatured, man. Can I it? Uh-uh. All right, I'll, sp I'll spray some of it. All right, I said I'll spray some of it, Kyle. If you guys want to add a lot of cells, a lot of dispersing effects, you're going to spritz it with 91% or higher isopropyl. I'm going to hit a couple random spots. If we like it, we can hit the whole thing. You can see all the craters it creates really cool dispersing effects. If you guys are going for that, hit the whole thing. Again, you can hit it randomly like I did. You can fine tune spots, just hit some areas and not others. We're just gonna go kind of real random on it. If you don't like that look, just mist it with denatured alcohol. That's gonna eliminate any bubbles and then you're not gonna get those craters like you do with the ISO. So again, we're just trying to get like small to medium drops of isopropyl on there. Kyle, we gotta clean this wall. So here's not sprayed, right? You see it's really cool looking as well. Move over to where we sprayed it. Just adds a lot of depth, craters, dispersing effects. And some of these will kind of disappear. The ones that'll typically stay are the ones where the spray paint's thinned out, right? Obviously, where there's not a lot of color in the black, they won't really stay. They'll kind of disperse out after a little bit. I want you guys to comment below. Let us know if you'd like the dispersing effect or not the dispersing effect. So let us know below which one you like the best. And on the next countertop, we'll either disperse it or we won't, depending on how many people liked it versus disliked it. So after you do the ISO, if you're doing isopropyl, let that evaporate for about five, 10 minutes and then we're gonna mist the surface with denatured alcohol. Um, if it doesn't pop all the bubbles and lay out glass smooth after one time spraying it, let that evaporate also we, before you spray it again. We don't wanna flood the surface with any of these uh, chemicals because it'll muddy out the colors and the veins and it just doesn't make it look as cool. So again, we're just gonna do one mist on it. If I need to hit it again, I'll let it evaporate for a minute and hit it again. So I'll go over the stuff you're gonna need. 
two five gallon buckets, five gallon mixing stick, six two and a half quart containers. It's always good to buy extra stuff as well, guys. Maybe grab an extra bucket, a couple extra of everything. A couple one gallon paint sticks, your kit, three gallons, your pigment, mixing drill, paddle, paddle wheel on there for your spray paints, and then some just drinking cups to spray the spray paint into to get that liquid out of the spray paint that we can dump into the resin. So for this kit, we're doing black, and then we're using these three colors. We got Seaside, French Blue, and then Maui Blue. So they're gonna look really cool, especially with that black base. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna dump out our Part A into the five gallon bucket and make sure you're not grabbing a Part B by accident. So we'll let the majority drain out. And then we'll wanna tilt it back to let any resin in the handles drain out. It gets trapped in there. Let that drain out for a second. And then we're just gonna let this drain until it slowly is dripping. Oh God, we should put, oh, there it is. Let's just, just, just do uh, eight. So once you have the steady stream turn into just small drips, that means you got all the resin out of the uh, buckets, the containers. So we're just gonna tilt these back, put the lids on them. And then we usually just put them back in the box that the kit came into. So now we got our two gallons of part A. Now we're gonna add the part B. It is more fluid, so it will obviously drain out of the jug a lot faster. Same thing, we'll let it drain out for a minute and we'll tilt it back, get all the resin out of that handle. And then we're gonna let that drip, drain until it slowly starts dripping. Cap it. All right, so now I'm gonna go over mixing, the most efficient way to mix. We call it 3P2. What we do is we take the mixing paddle we start at the top. We go as fast as we can without splashing material everywhere. We go all the way down to the bottom. Once we hit the bottom, we go around a little bit while we're spinning the drill, come back up slowly. Once we get to the top, slow it down a little, spin it around the edge again. That stands for one. We're gonna do that three times, and then we're gonna pour into a secondary mixing container, and then we're gonna go up and down two more times. So what that's gonna do is make sure all the resins thoroughly mixed, we don't have any part A on the edges of the bucket that's unmixed that, that could create a soft spot on your project. So if you mix just like this, you'll never have an issue with unmixed resin or soft resin uh, on your projects. Now what I like to do is add the pigment at this time because I'm gonna go up and down two more times. That's gonna mix that pigment in really well. I like to shake this up a little and then try not to make a mess here from shaking it. And then we're gonna dump all of this in here. And then use that stick to get as much out as we can. And now we go up and down two more times. There it is guys, that's the most efficient way to mix resin. Um, this is never gonna have an issue with setting up or having soft spots or having unmixed resin when we dump it out. So the next thing, I'm gonna have Kyle jump in here. He's gonna start spraying the spray paints into the cups. He's gonna shake them obviously, spray them in, put a rag over them, get some of those colors filled up. While he's doing that, I'm gonna clean out the paddle wheel. If you're doing this a lot, to keep them clean, denatured alcohol in a bucket, and I'm just gonna spin this around a little bit. So then I got a nice clean paddle. I can just wipe off now with a rag and I don't have to worry about hard resin breaking off into other projects I'm using and I don't have to buy new paddles. Guys, when you're spraying into the container, make sure you're, you're not spraying in like this. You wanna have the, con the spray paint container down so you're getting that pigment out. So what we're gonna do now, 
we'll pour just a little bit and maybe two or three of these in the bottom just a little bit, fill them up with black, and then as we're pouring out, we're gonna dump onto the top so we get majority of those colors. And then we're gonna fill up right about 64 ounces of the black. You see how the pigment, the spray paint just wants to go to the top, which is fine. We're still gonna get some in mixing with the resin by doing it like this. All right, James, let's run over here. Kyle can be bringing these over. I'll do the, I'll do the weather stripping. So before you mix, make sure you got your tape on your edges or weather stripping. We actually like the weather stripping a little better because we don't have any blowouts ever. Sometimes when you tape your faces with this uh, painter's tape, if you have an unlevel spot or it builds up too much there, it, it can blow out that tape sometimes and then you have to kind of mess with it to fix it. And this is what we use, guys. Just foam window seal, 3 16 tall, 3 8 wide. Works perfect for our stone kit process. Um, the biggest trick is going right to your edge. We don't want to tape this have it way out here and we have this big gap on our edge. Notice how he's taped all that right to the edge of the countertop. Once we get it all laid out, we wanna go around and press it down really good. And then we don't, also don't like using spots that have creases. So you can either cut it out or you can just pull a little piece and double it up there. So next step guys is to pull this tape. We just check the resin to see how sticky it is. See how it takes it a minute to level out. It kind of just sits in a crater. It's kind of leveling out very slow before it kind of was like leveled out right off the bat. Sticky. So now we want to pull it. And then when we're pulling this, see how I drag it down to the edge? It brings the resin right to the corner versus if I pull it straight up. Now we have a gap here that we have to fill in with our hand. We want to bring that to the edge, get rid of surface tension. So when I'm pulling it off, down to it, uh, down at an angle, and it drags the resin right to that edge. Nice little Ligari tip for you. And then I'll just throw these somewhere we're not going to be walking on them. All right, so the next thing we want to do is Make sure we get product all to the edge if there's spots that didn't, and that's going to let it start flowing over. We just kind of pull it to the edge. Just really watch these edges, make sure it's flowing over good. We can always manipulate it a little bit if we, if we get like a run or a drip in it, but if you just walk away and assume the edges will look good, um, high chance you might come back and have a spot you don't like. So. Kind of babysit your edges, and then once you're fine, finally happy with the edges, everything looks good, last thing you do is scrape your drips, thin putty knife, and you just run this on the bottom, and that'll knock off all your drips, that we don't have to sand those the next day. So we're gonna let this thing drip, we're gonna wash the edges, fine tune any imperfections, always check your outside corners. If you need to add a little, typically you have some in your buckets left over, you can get some, you can use the stuff that you're scraping off your drips. Right, I can scrape my drips a little bit. We'll finish this thing up and then show you the final footage.
Thank you.